Welcome back. Today, we're going to dive into the beginner's guide to create labs in EVNG. In this video, we'll cover five things. One is different login consoles, native and HTML5. Two is the installation of Windows client pack. Three is using Wireshark for packet captures. Four is fixing common Wireshark errors that you get when you're starting EVNG. Five and the last one is to navigate the web topology page to build your first lab. Now, whether you're preparing for a certification, testing a network setup, or just curious about network emulation, this video is perfect as a starting point. So grab your virtual gear and let's get started. So first up, let's talk about native and HTML consoles. On EVNG, when you create a lab, you can access your device's console in two ways, the native console and the HTML5 console. Username password option, that's gonna be exactly the same. It's admin and then it's EVE, if you're still using the default. Now you have two options here, native and HTML. Let's go one by one. If you go to native, and I'm in my lab that I was just working on, this is the traditional way using applications like PuTTY or Secure CRTC to log into your devices. So for example, if I want to log into this router here, I can just double click and it's going to give me an option to open SSH using Telnet. I click on it and I get into PuTTY and that's how I get into my device. Now, if you were using Secure, uh, secure CRT as your default application, then you will be using that in this case. I am in my console and I'm in there. If I log out, and let's look at the second option here, we're gonna use the same username, password, admin and EVE. Instead of native console, I use the HTML5 console. Looks the same, the lab is exactly the same, just the way you log in is a little bit different. So if I click on the router one now, you notice that instead of using an external, it's using the browser itself to getting into the same switch. It's no difference, right? So it's accessible directly through your web browser. No additional software needed, Perfect for quick access for any beginner, I would say. But it just depends which one would you like to prefer. Now for beginners, if you want to start with just a basic setup, I would say you can start with HTML5 console. It's super convenient. Just click on your device, select the console, and then you start configuring in your browser itself. If I'm going to open up the same one and open the router too, it again opens up router two in the second browser. It's very convenient, it's right here. I'm router one is right here, router two is right here. And if I had multiple devices, similarly, everything is right here. Now, next let's explore the Windows client pack and how to integrate wireless captures into your lab. This pack includes essential Windows-based client images that you can use in your labs. And with Wireshark, you can analyze the traffic these clients are gonna generate. Now, being able to use Wireshark with your lab environment is pretty powerful, A, because if you want to try to learn the protocol, the way they're supposed to work, that's one. And obviously, if you're trying to troubleshoot, that is another good aspect of it. Now, in order to get up and running, the easiest way to do it is, first of all, if you're using Windows or Mac, download the client uh, download the client pack. That comes with few options already, Wireshark, uh, it comes with Putty, Ultra VNC. So it comes with a little pack, so you can download that and install it. Now, if you install it with this, it has a bit of an advantage is because if you look at the cookbook for the EVNG, which I'm going to walk you through right now, is you need to be you need to sure that the Varshark wrapper.bat file has to kind of sit into the same folder. If you've done a default installation, then you might not have that. So I would recommend just go ahead and download that Windows file or Mac file, depending on what OS you're working on, and then just go ahead and install that and obviously the win version that you see with Wireshark here is is a little older and then you can upgrade it after once it opens up right uh, and a couple of other things is when you have this Wireshark it needs to make sure that you have the same username password but if you install it with this then you don't have to worry about all these things so i would just say that go to this website that i was trying to show you before once i've done all that i have a file now right click on it capture, pick up an interface that you want to. And in case you run into this error, which says end of file on pipe, magic Turing open, I would say close it. Now in order to fix this, the easiest way to fix this would be is just go to PuTTY at this point. Let's open PuTTY here and try to go into your EVNG using PuTTY, so let's do that. And I'm gonna try and SSH into it. Okay, so we'll just use the IP here, obviously. 
which is 192.168.130 SSH. And I'll say open. And it's going to say host keys are not cached. Usual stuff that shows up. I say accept, no problem there. And it's going to ask me to how do you want to log in? Now log in as root and then EVE, which has been the password so far, and then you're in. Now once you're in, this is the one time you got to do. It's not something that you'll have to do it every time. Now let's try and do the same thing once again. Capture. No error this time. Now, obviously, there is not much going on. That's why, uh, except some spanning tree. That's the reason why it's not showing much of it. But if you had a wrap running, you were testing for a ping, you'll see all those. If you're running a DHCP, you'll see all that stuff. Okay. So if you see that error message, SSH into it just one time, and that's it. And then going forward, you'll not see that again. So that's a good tip to keep in mind. Let's move on. In case you're interested in seeing how this really works is, as I said before, click on the Windows integration pack, takes you to the download mega, you download it, it's in my download section. So what I've done here is I've actually taken the file and I have actually put into my installation files here, which is this one right here. So I'll right click and then run as an administrator, I want to install them. And we'll just sit to the installation. And as I said to you before, it's pretty much the client setup here. So you can very much go with the next. As you see, these are the things that it's going to install. For me, I'm going to uncheck on Wireshark here in my case because I already have it. And I will simply just finish through everything. And it's also setting up the Ultra VNC here option. I can say I accept it. Next. And you're done. And if you remember is this is really what's important is when you're using the native console option. If you're using the HTML5 option, then you really don't need this. But if you're trying to do Putty or if you're trying to do Wireshark, then you need to go with the native option and you have to install this pack. Okay, now let's dive into the web topology page, the heart of EVNG lab. Here you'll work with nodes, objects to build your network topology. If you look at the cookbook example here that I'm showing you, this is just a sample. This is the sidebar, which I'm going to quickly walk you through. Let's log into the real environment and see what it exactly looks like. This is the real environment. This is the canvas page or the web topology page. This is where you build all your labs you first thing you usually start with by adding nodes now if you look at the sidebar if you click on add object it gives you nodes networks picture custom shape and text i think these are the most important things if you right click on the canvas it gives you the same exact themes nodes are where you are adding your virtual devices like routers switches firewalls and more depending on what you've added you just click on node it basically gives you a blue highlight which means this is the image that's available for you if you follow the video series so far i've added a cisco image and i've added a fortinet image those are the two ones that are available for now but in later we'll add few more so i'll have more options for now let's simply just add cisco IL images i'll say i want four i'll say save and just gives me four images right there to understand here is the network piece i think this is more important than anything else at this point now if you're wondering what these are Let's understand different interfaces. The bridge management and cloud are the options that you will see. So you see bridge management and cloud. Each serves a unique purpose in the lab. Now bridge interfaces, you can connect virtual devices to each other. Use this as inter device communication with your lab. A bridge interface is pretty much like a unmanaged switch at this point. The management interfaces used for managing the EVNG server itself or if you have an, a device inside, like Fortinet we have in this lab, I can have web access to that. Let's give you an example here. So this is the bridge interface. If I go right click, it shows you that's a bridge interface. I'm just calling it bridge on purpose, so you know that. What I can do is I can connect these routers to it. 
one thing I want you to see closely is you never get an option of what interface are you going to pick up on the bridge. You only get an option of which option do I pick up on my node side. This is not trying to make it simple. So this is a bridge connecting different devices. And that's it. Now this is the management. It's also called as Cloud Zero. Now, why is this important is because this is where you are able to log into your devices. So if I go to my buddy session that I had open here before, and I just logged into my Fortinet and I said diagnose IP address list, it told me that my Fortinet is getting 192.168.136.129. That's where I logged in. I log in with my username and password that I have set up. And I'm in my Fortinet at this point. So this is why you need the management interface. Now, there is another option you have. You see more cloud interfaces. Now, this is if you're trying to link your lab to the outside world or other virtual machines that you're running within your VMware. We don't need to worry about that for now. Maybe in future, we might add some options there. For now, most important would be your bridge and your management interfaces. So understanding where and where to use these interfaces is crucial for building obviously effective and functional labs. So bridge is for internal communication, management for server control, and cloud is for external connectivity. Okay. The next thing you want to look at is also going to be your custom shapes. Pretty straightforward. I want to add a square here. I can say the square is for the whole thing. So I can make the square bigger here. Right. If I want to include more things. So once you add it, you can change it. I go ahead and I can say edit. That gives me a lot of other options as well. Now I can go with the border with being thicker and thinner. I can make it solid versus dashed color. I can pick up a different one if I like one. Right. So now it's changed. I can have a background if I like. Something light. So sure. That's a background. I can also rotate the image if I want. This is for your square. Now, if I want to have another option of instead of square, I want to have a circle. I can do a circle. Same way it gets thrown away. You can kind of make it like a little oval if you like. So it depends on how you set it up. Same options are available to me here as well. I can edit and I can change it to solid, to dash. I can pick up a color. Same exact options that I did there. I can have all those options here as well. Okay. The last thing I want to do is the text. Now, this is where I want to start adding IP addresses, for example. Right. So let's say if I have done that, slash 24. And I can pick up a font size. Let's say I'm going to pick up 20 here. And same options are available when I go and edit. I can change the color if I want to make it look like a red. Sure, it picks up red. I can make it bold if I want. And now if I want to just duplicate that and say, and once I'm saved it, and I can also very easily edit this if I want to by just moving the mouse and saying, okay, this one is dot 10 instead of one. You get the idea. Now, with these quick things, you can very easily get your lab up and running. Now, there are a few other options that I haven't touched, uh, which are your startup configs. There are some more options where you can start all nodes, stop all nodes, or wipe if you want to clean up your lab. I don't see using them too much. And another option I want to say is you can lock your lab, which means after that, once you hit, click on that button, you won't be able to change anything. And you can use to pick up a, a dark mode if you like working that way. It depends on how you like it. And all this information is given in much more details into the cookbook when you go to the cookbook and it tells you exactly what these are. But I think I have covered the most common ones that you would need to get your lab up and running. More advanced things we could look into the future videos as we need them. So that should be good for now.
Now to the next section, the beginner's guide to create labs in EVNG. Now you know how to navigate different console, install a Windows client pack, integrate Wireshark for packet capture, troubleshoot common error messages, and start building your very first networking lab using the web topology page. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more networking tutorials and tips. Have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover next? Drop them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Happy networking. See you in the next video. Bye for now.